You want to tell them? We're off on the road again. We're on a, va a vacay. This time it's a vacay. It's and you won't believe where we're going. See you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> we'll be back in a few days. More than a few days, maybe? Yeah. So, we'll, uh, we'll keep you guessing. 52 degrees here. Yeah, it's we're... It's a difficult thing to leave when it's like... I don't know, what was it, 60 something today and a year ago we were getting stuck in the driveway because there was so much snow. So having a March vacation seems like a good idea. That was used to be a good idea. It was. Not this year. Not this year. Guys are out picking rock in the fields today, but well, enough of that. We're heading west. That's all we'll say for now. West, young man. Okay, we'll see you in a few hours. Okay, how many hours of travel are we into this? A lot. Holy big holes. We are in California and left turn here because we're coming up on the sign. We've got the rental vehicle, <laughs> which I got talked into an upgrade. Oh, talked into. Talked into, yes. And it is a uh, purple. <laughs> charger. No, it's oh, not a charger. That's right. Charger, you know, when I sure. I have a charger, I can never, this ain't right. Why do I think I'm in a charger when I'm in a Challenger and then the opposite? Well, whatever. We so we're in, uh, we're in California at Dutch Hollow Farms, which is John, John. boss, and we're going to go see if he's really the boss here. <laughs> Stay tuned. So he's got a fun, um, I think they call it agritourism, is, is what John does in Central California. Right now the tulips are blooming. And so people come to pick their own. It's called You Pick. And uh, he had a big craft sale today. It was to end at 3 p.m. and I see it's 4.30 and people are just leaving. However, I think they can pick tulips longer. But he's got lots of fun things for kids, for families, and I believe maybe I some he, llamas. Do you think he has llamas? Uh, he had some llamas here last year, I believe. Where? What am I supposed to do? Go drive around? We're supposed to maybe, go find him. Maybe I should just roll the window down and start hollering, John! But yeah, he's uh, he's more or less on Instagram, so if you guys are, are uh, trying to look for him, if you've Gonna go out to California, go check them out. Uh, Dutch Hollow Farms mm -hmm. in Modesto. Modesto. I should have brought a horse. There's some barrels here we could have tied the horse <laughs> up to. So, John, uh, why is the volume on so high on that one? Ever since day one, that one was born. <laughs> that is how that one came out screaming. Because his brother, you don't hear him. No. She's, she's taking care but that, of But that one has been screaming since day one. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't I, explain we it. We maybe should take him home. <laughs> so we'll go down and quickly look at the rest. It's kind of like a, it's just like a uh, fair. Like a fair. Like county a county fair. fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just to make it look like the fair. <laughs> well, our, we're out here to check out the tractor, which somebody was kind enough to put some flowers on top. Oh, huh. they're not doing too good. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, when evidently you self-pick, uh, or allow people to self-pick the tulips. They're choosy, they pick them, <laughs> and then they find a different one that looks better, so then they toss them. 
So there goes the profit. I think, what else did you, what did you lose last night? Oh, Amy made us go dancing, so my voice, <laughs> because it was quite loud and, yeah, so this morning is the day after I lost my voice episode. <laughs> so, we just thought we'd show you the tulips and uh, I'll maybe take a drive around quick and then we'll find something else to do. I think, I wonder if they use the, the tractor as like a photo opportunity. I think so. I believe so. They just stand, maybe they were fresh for the photo op. And they were so excited that they got their picture taken, they forgot to take their flowers. I think so. That's it. That's that has it to be it, right? Gotta be. So now, uh, Amy, she made made me upgrade this. I made you upgrade it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Of course not, but I was quite disappointed when I found out that it's got a uh, six cylinder. I don't even know why people, why? If you're gonna buy it, gotta have the eight cylinder. That, in my opinion. I suppose you don't have to have the eight cylinder, but I sure would. Because if you can, why not? Ouch! Well, I maybe should have stuck to the sedan. I told you we were going to drive around a little bit, but uh, time is getting tight, so there. There's the tractor. Now we've got a tractor in the video, everything is fine. The second tractor, I should say, we got a green one and a blue one. So that's, that's all for this day and hopefully tomorrow. Maybe we'll see some almond farms. Oh yeah, might have to check out some orchards too. So we'll, we'll see what else we can get into, but I've heard rumors of uh, watermelon. watermelon farms. So. Maybe I can just dive face first into the watermelon pile. They're not ready yet. They aren't? They're going to be planting them. It's so bizarre because they've got tulips and they shouldn't have tulips. And I'm pretty sure. Well, no, we'll see. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. And I sure hope the guys at the farm are still working because, you know, I can just see them sitting in a circle on the flower couch. <laughs> just, yeah, I wonder what Doug's doing. Yeah. Well, let's just keep looking at TikTok. I've never seen them do that once. <laughs> Are you having fun? I don't know where everyone went, but as soon as the work started, they left. <laughs> John, uh, you want to tell us where you took us? Well, we're right now at Van Groningen and Sons out here in Manteca, California, and they specialize in growing watermelons and pumpkins. And right now, it's planting day for watermelons. You are, what do you call this? Replant? Transplants. Transplants, which I thought transplanting was something that uh, you went in and, and done after something died or you just replaced the plant that was missing. But this is actually what I would say is planting, but it's transplant. Transplanting. Right. Transplanting transplants, if that <laughs> makes any sense. How do you get enough plants to make it to the other end? So we've got two racks on the transplanter here. And they'll put enough seedless on there and seeded plants to make it up and back so we don't have to have a trailer on the other side uh, with the transplants. But they, uh, we plant every, we plant four seedless to every seeded plant in the field. So it's four to one is our ratio out here. Uh, and sometimes we use a super pollinator and we don't even put that seeded in and we'll use just a, uh, we'll drop in a super pollinator plant that's a male, but it doesn't produce anything okay. or any fruit of any that they're not going to consume. Every so many feet or so many? 24 to 30 inch, right? I don't know exactly. I'm not sure which wheel we have on there right now. I think it's a 30 right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And this is your dad? It's my father, Dan. Dan. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we better shape. There you go. <laughs> so, He's yeah. taught me everything he knows. So. You and you, him you've been know. doing this for how long? You know, I started doing this in 1970 when I got out of the Army. Okay. So that tells you how many yeah. years, you know, years ago. But the thing has really changed over the last 25 years. We didn't have drip and plastic. And so we really, once we started doing drip and plastic, our yields went up and we never looked back. We have a lot of cost in our fields initially. 
but the returns make up for it. Yeah. You know, we have huge returns. So yields. you never ever flood irrigated years ago with the uh, water? <laughs> we would furrow irrigate. We'd okay. have a furrow in between there, yeah, so that would be a furrow. And okay. we would irrigate in Up there, furrow down. irrigate. And the problem is, is that, you know, you'd be irrigating, but then you have to be picking, and you have to wait for that furrow to dry out. Now, it's water on demand. As soon as we're done harvesting, we start water. Okay. And in seven, eight days, we're harvesting, but that furrow, is dry, right. plus the water melons get water melon, uh, uh, they get water on demand. Okay. As soon as we're done harvesting, they get, the water's gone. We, got, we put two drip line in underneath. That's where it starts. We'll connect to here and feed it with our submain. And there's two line underneath the under the uh, under the plastic mulcher that feeds it. This is seven eighths tape. It's got 12 inch spacing emitters on it. So you turn that on every well, other day or we like during the summer when it's 90 100 degrees out here we'll water every day maybe six hours every every okay. section of the field we get watered probably about six yeah. minimum six hours every day okay. and you're just constantly feeding it. we can run our drip our uh, our fertilizer through here liquid fertilizer and slowly feed it and uh it's just, it's been a complete game changer instead just like you you don't you don't just drink water every seventh day right i mean no. you need to water if you drink water a little bit every day, it's the same thing with these plants. When we're doing the same thing, you don't want to starve them. Okay. So you're constantly giving, feeding them water, feeding them a little bit of fertilizer. We have moisture probes in the field too. The ends of the field, we have a moisture probe with a gauge on it. And it'll tell you when it's too much or not enough. So they look at that also. Amy always tells me I don't drink enough water, so maybe I could get a probe and, <laughs> and that would remind me to drink. So we'll go down there and maybe try to check out the, yeah. the planter, or what do you call it? Transplanter. Transplanter. That's what I needed for our corn plant last year to get her out of the ground quick. Yeah, no, exactly. Depending on the soil, like we're in a pretty sandy loam soil here, uh, we have these people walking behind, putting a little bit of dirt in around that plant just to make sure there's enough dirt there to seal the moisture and kind of kind of seal off the plastic so we don't get a lot of wind through there and rip it up again. Yeah. And then if one doesn't get put in nice, it's kind of their job behind to straighten it out. Okay. And uh, and make sure it's in in its spot where it's supposed to be. We've got family operation right here, cousins, and you guys are cousins, right? We're cousins, okay. and yeah. Our, once our father's retired, it's basically our headache, and my brother, my brother-in-law, the four of us. It's the four of us now. It's our headache to keep this going, and hopefully the next generation. His son's got another year in college, and my oldest is graduating this year. And... <laughs> well, Amy, I suppose we'll go down there and check out a few more things, and. We'll have to maybe come back uh, right before the 4th of July and when my voice comes back, if it does come back. <laughs> Strange colored tractor. Where's all the John Deere's? Oh, that's right. They're on the important stuff. So this here, as you see, it's shaped differently or it's not a smooth barrel. They are actually taking that and forming the the bed so the watermelons will be planted on top of the on top of the bed and then the tractors drive in the low spots and then we're gonna go over here and check out how they put the plastic down to plant plant the watermelons like we just came from over over there over north a little bit and uh, I actually think it looks fun other than the dust that the guys have to sit in and take, but looks like an okay job to me. It's really short he'll quick tuck the next roll in behind it and it'll just kind of feed it right through if you can see how it's just starting he's just 
it, he just tossed it down so now it's underneath. The other one goes over top, and then he's got to put dirt right over the seam where it meets. So there's really, boy, you'd have to have a lot of fancy stuff to have that automated. Yeah, to, yeah, it would never work. Yeah, right. And again, these manufacturers do a good job at building a piece of equipment, but it doesn't fit every... Yeah. This watermelons that are grown here versus in Ohio or, or in, in Utah or in Texas or in Florida, it's all it's different everywhere. Everybody does it a little bit different. Yeah. There's no standardized way of doing it. So what's going on here? So as you can see, they're putting in drip tape over on this end here, and you can see here's, uh, here's three beds that they've done, and you have voids where the drip tape went in. So we've got the New Holland tractor and the Unver Firth Perfecta. Uh, three, it does three 80-inch beds, uh, spring tooth. And it uh, basically closes in. You can see exactly what it, le it leaves a nice, nice top soil there for the bed, and and ready for the next process of rolling and shaping the bed before plastic. Well, I can see. I better call the boys because the sticker is not doing what it used to do. <laughs> yeah, you only got one left that says perfect. I think it was a perfected two, if I remember correctly. We've got four of them, and you know what? Structurally, they've been great. They've they've worked really well. Uh, we still use all four of them. So do I want to ask how many semi loads of drip tape do you uh, think you go through a year? Oh man, it's not, you know, this year we're probably going to put in about 900 acres worth of, of drip tape, you know, so each year we use it. So as far as truckload goes, it's, it's hard to come up with that exact number, but it probably two or three maybe truckloads worth of drip tape. Because uh, every roll is different. This one's like got 8,000 foot on this roll here versus some rolls, depending on the thickness of the tape, might only have 3,500 feet on the roll. So it varies quite, there's quite a drastic change in some of the different types that we use. So how many miles do you think you have? I couldn't tell you miles, but I know we use 13,200 feet of drip tape per acre is what we use. Um, you can do the math real quick, I yeah. can't in my head. I'll let you guys do the calculating. But yeah. The, I always figure a little bit more because as you can see, they leave a little bit left on the drip on the on the reel. So I always figure another, I figure about 13,400 feet per acre because a lot of times we don't want to start the roll again and then put a coupler just, right. just 20, 30 feet into the field. Right. So we try to limit how many couplers we put in the field because every coupler is not cheap to put right. in. And it, as you can see them out there, they've been stalled for a little while, putting one in uh, and, that, and that happens. Yeah. So. drip line going in. So as you can see here, they, they grow two different seeds, but they use a squash root system, and then they put the watermelon plant on top of it, and here you can see where they, they graft them back together. So they grow two different seeds to make one plant, but these plants are gonna be more vigorous than original watermelon. Plant. So grafted now, they actually physically take and cut. Yeah. They, I, I think it's pretty much computer cut type type of situation, and then they put them together, and then they put these little plastic things to kind of hold them kind of together until they bond together. Like a big band aid. It's like or a, a little band aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't ask me too many questions about this deal, but we thought we'd show you. The two differences between the grafted and the yeah. So they they went to this grafted one because it can make a more vigorous plant. But each plant cost them probably about a dollar thirty-five. I think they said. Yeah. So, so maybe three times as much for this yes. versus the. It was thirty-five cents for for a regular plant, but right. this is a dollar thirty-five, and at fifteen hundred plants an acre. So right. It's not for the faint of heart. Okay. <laughs> there he is. Here I am. And Amy's going to do all the talking because my voice is roached. Well, so. maybe people don't know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Ryan Volk, uh, almond grower here in California, the Central Valley. And uh, been doing Instagram, YouTube, and things like that as California farmer. And one of the things we showcase is our almond orchards here. And that's just one of the things we do. We also have a poultry operation. Um, but kind of right now the focus right now would be on the almonds so we just got done with bloom so right here you can see we've got all these flowers I don't know how the lighting is but there's still some flowers on here 
if you would have been here three weeks ago, these trees would have been beautiful, just completely full of all these, every, every spot on here where you see these little spots would have been a beautiful flower. And so it's really pretty. You get all the, we call it the, the, the valley girls are out here taking their pictures and just looking so <laughs> sure pretty. sure they are. <laughs> and, uh, yep, taking their selfies. And and now this little green right mm -hmm. here, that's a blossom. Yeah, so yeah. that one either has, well, so that might, yeah, you're right. That is a blossom. It just hasn't, it's been late to the party. Late to the party. So it's going to fall off. So, but, like, a lot of these will just fall right off. So, like, that uh -huh. one, that one's still forming and you can start to see it starting to form a little bit. But some of these, so you'll go through here and you can kind of hit these and mm -hmm. so the ones that aren't gonna take, oh. just fall off. So what's this green then? This is a start. Of so a, that's a start, yep. So right here. Of an almond, as they call of them Of an here, almond. Which that's, we don't call them that, but. Yep. So yeah, so that's this right cool. here is the start. And so if you pull this off, so the, it's just beginning to form. There's not much, much going on here that you can really see inside. I guess you can a little bit right there. Hmm. So you can see the almonds starting to form inside there. So you have the outer hole, then a shell, then the almond. So the, the shell hasn't formed yet, but the almond is growing. Yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah. And then I was asking you earlier about there was some black ones like that. Like this. Yep. That were hanging on. Those are hanging on. So those are from last year's harvest. And so it we called these. It didn't get harvested. Yep. <laughs> It didn't get harvested, so they stuck to the tree. And so there's a lot of reasons why they might stick to the tree. Kind of one of the biggest ones is just is water and timing. Mm. And so we have to make sure we're kind of, we're not cutting too far back on water before harvest, but we're also making sure they get enough water. It's a real, it's a real fine balance and then timing them. So you got to make sure that it's just like with any harvest, you got to make sure it's the right time. So you were saying that you've got three different yeah. varieties yeah three different varieties out here so we have wood colony aldrich and non -prail. those are just the names we use and there's a lot of different varieties but the the largest one kind of the we call it the money maker is the non -prail. so that's the one that you see in the stores in the can that's the best looking one best tasting one and so that one's got the highest dollar value to it the other ones will get mixed up they'll either get put in candies or they've got almond butter there's all kinds of different things but another big one that you always hear about and that's the kind of controversial one is the almond milk. So um, why is it controversial? So you've got, right, you've got dairy farmers and you've oh. got, so you've got dairy milk. And so a lot of it, you know, is there's, they feel like it's competition and, and it, it is, you know, and that's what's kind of interesting about California here is I've got friends who are big time dairy farmers, but they also grow almonds, okay. you know, and so. Yeah, so then that works out for those of us that cannot drink dairy yep. and so i'm very happy to have almond milk so thank you <laughs> exactly absolutely so and almond yogurt and yep. almond butter and, butter there's yeah. all kinds of stuff it's one of the most versatile nuts that you can yeah. you can make a lot of different things out of it and do a lot of different things with it so yeah. we'll come through and we'll mow it here probably in the next three weeks or so two three weeks so you leave the green all yep so we'll leave the summer. green up until about July. Uh, yeah, end of July and we'll, we'll come through and do our, do our kill down before harvest. So we have the irrigation lines here. We've got a sprinkler and then we also have a second line that has drip. Um, and so some guys will run, uh, there's a few different styles you'll see. So you'll see, you'll see flood irrigation, which is the real old school way of doing it in some areas. Um, the most popular I would say is these, is these micro sprinklers right here. Um, and then you'll also see a pretty popular one is the uh, drip lines. And so uh, the reason why we kind of prefer the sprinkler, is just you're able to get a lot more down, a lot, lot more water down faster than the drip, drip lines are able to. But there's not really kind of a one way is the best way or one, they, they all work, you know. So we just prefer to do the, the sprinklers. Now, so whose job? <laughs> Is it to uh, tie all the string around and why do you have to do it? So, uh, we're, in fact, we're actually gonna be doing this on our young orchard just tomorrow. We'll be, we'll be uh, roping, putting our second rope on. So when they're young, um, they start to get a crop on them. They're not strong enough to hold up on their own if they get a really good heavy set crop. That's way in there now it's growing around yep, it. Yep, it just grows around it and mm -hmm. It, it lives through it. So some guys will go through and they'll, you know, they'll go through and they'll cut these out before it gets to that point and they'll re-rope it. Um, but 
we obviously didn't do that. Uh, and so, but then you'll go through and then uh, like a, a year later or so, they'll go through and then as the tree has grown, they'll put in a second rope. And so you'll, especially with our Aldrich variety, because they kind of grow straight up compared to the rest. Yeah. If they don't have a good rope system like this, they'll just fall apart because they just have such, they'll get such a heavy crop heavy. on them. You can really see how these are like really fanned compared to this variety right here. There's there's a little more side shooting going on, whereas these are really tall. Yep. And, yeah. You yep. know I can't pass yeah, it up. <laughs> if only we were closer, we could just load it up and take it. <laughs> it's it's a real bummer too, is not getting to see the D11s <laughs> doing their yeah. work for the orchards. I can't imagine a D11. That must be. It's it's massive. Yeah. So here we got a, what do you call this? This is a 1963 International Lodestar. So you actually probably saw them a lot in the Midwest for like green trucks and stuff like that. But uh, this was actually, a, it was an old cattle truck, just a small, you know, small cattle truck. Didn't have stacks or anything like that. It was a gas engine. And so my brother-in-law and I, we uh, completely converted it. So it's got like 2004 F650 axles. Uh, and it's got a 1994 uh, DT360 International inline diesel. And so we modified it quite a bit, so. I thought you were gonna call it my Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Take it. I think uh, on Instagram you have everything ripped off, right? Yeah. I've seen some stories about. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's, my brother-in-law's Instagram channel or uh, YouTube channel, Ginger Auto, and that's where we built this on there, completely from the ground up. Well, Amy, do you want to uh, tell them that we made it home? It's midnight. And uh, we're back from California. <clears throat> That's right. And uh, come along. We learned something else. I always bring extra batteries for the GoPro. Oh. I brought three. One had a nuclear meltdown <laughs> and decided to end its life halfway through. So I actually only had two and a half. And uh, <clears throat> that's why it got a little short over there at, at Ryan's place, but yeah, it, it is what it is. And now we're home to start in working again. And <laughs> I don't look at our stuff over there because Amy, oh. Amy went and decided that we needed a new shower. So hopefully that's all buttoned up there. I, I'm sure there's more work to do, but. My oh water. yeah, and Amy, Amy. <laughs> I don't know, do we, do we well, dare there. tell anybody that we smuggled a watermelon from California to Minnesota? That's okay, right? It fell out of the, the planter. We found it on the road, so. We found it on the road and I asked them if I could take it, Van Groningen's, and he said I could, but it's looking pretty, <laughs> pretty <clears throat> wilted. But I think I'm going to stick it in a pot and see. It might just be a vining plant. Because it, how is it going to propagate? Because this is a seedless watermelon. I suppose our luck, it's... If it's, I plant it in with the roses, would it prop? I don't know. Anymore. Well, there, there was some, tom, some talk about a male one. Right. And I don't so do the male ones, they don't even... I don't I know. It's, it's late. Gonna we're we're, we're going to just... Thank you all for <clears> going with us. And if you don't like this here... I don't know, we're just, we're trying to do different stuff, uh, thinking that the farming stuff is getting boring, and now we're taking you on our vacation. So if you don't like it, Help leave me. a comment. I'm sure Chet will read it and we'll figure something out, but. We vacation to farms. That's what we do now. That's my, yep. <laughs> you better all tell Amy she done a good job putting up with the farm stuff because usually she's more into the ocean laying in a chair or something like that but okay i'm out see you later thanks for joining <laughs> <laughs>